inaugural ball ceremonies well underway. Governor Tommy Thompson has arrived. I'm Vicki Kunkel at the Dane County Coliseum. I'll have that story next on the night feed. Also in the news tonight, instead of mourning their loss of the Capitol's East Wing, Democrats party as well. And potential health risks at a West Side Madison school. Dana says her forecast is still running about three months behind schedule. And in sports, Van tells us of a lesser known state college coach worth meeting. All these details next on News 3 at 10. Beth Zerbachen and Ken Rice with the news. Dana Tyler with weather. And Van Stout on sports. This is News 3. Wisconsin's new governor, Tommy Thompson, and a few thousand of his closest friends are celebrating tonight at the Dane County Coliseum. Good evening. About 7,000 people are dancing and partying in the hockey arena turn ballroom at this hour. And on the Night Beat News 3's Vicki Kunkel is live at the inaugural ball. And Vicki, we are told this is quite a different scene from the same party of four years ago. It certainly is, Ken and Beth. And uh, Governor Tommy Thompson arrived about 15 minutes ago before just a jubilant crowd. The last time a group this large gathered at the Coliseum was in the days of Governor Patrick Lucy for his inauguration. And it is quite a contrast from four years ago when then-Governor Anthony Earle went to his inauguration at the UW Fieldhouse. I think one member of the Republican Party summed it up best tonight when he told me, you can tell we're all Republicans, it's a bigger party than the last time. And it is indeed tonight a grand ball. The evening began with a half-hour pre-ball concert by the Royal High School Band from Elroy. Then about 8 o'clock, the orchestra took up their instruments and the party was underway. Ballgoers took to the dance floor. While many danced, others, mostly Elroy supporters who showed up to see a hometown boy made good, celebrate his governorship. I have the Thompson children for mu uh, music lessons, piano lessons. I taught in their home. In what do you home. think about this, seeing him tonight here? Oh, I think it's just terrific. I'm thinking he's going to do a great job for our state. They're like family to me. And I've seen their children grow up, and I've watched Tommy progress, and I've prayed for him and his family. And this is the result. Others were Thompson supporters from farther away. Well, we drove down. It's a little over 200 miles, and uh, we drove down this morning to be here, and we were there in time for the inauguration at noon today, too. We were here at 10 o'clock this morning. It's been a long day, but we've enjoyed it. It's really exciting. Having a great time. About 9 o'clock, the guest of honor arrived. Wisconsin's Governor Tommy Thompson. And when the governor arrived, he uh, went to the podium and said, I'm having a great day, and it keeps getting better all the time. And indeed it is, the party going strong tonight. An interesting note tonight when the uh, cabinet members were being introduced and walking up, Donald Hannaway was announced, and the uh, band did their little rebel reform, but he didn't walk up. Nobody has found him since. He is somewhere around here, but uh, we haven't been able to find him yet. Okay, Vicki, is there anybody left in Elroy tonight, or are they all down at the Coliseum? I don't know, uh, Ken. I think just about everybody from Elroy is here. I talked to a lot of people in the stands, and there was only one person who uh, was not from Elroy. So it's mostly an Elroy crowd and a political Republican crowd. No surprise there. Thanks very much, Vicki Kunkel at the Coliseum. <laughs> Well, across the city, the state Democrats are celebrating a victory of their own tonight as their party will control both the House and Assembly this year. The cost of getting into this event, $10 less than the Republican bash. So at $5 a person, the room soon filled with people ready for dancing, drinks, and pretzels. Amid all the smiles tonight, Democratic leaders say they're waiting to see what kind of budget will come from the Republican Every governor. Title to a honeymoon, but uh, we'll have to see what kind of a budget he comes up with. You know, that's really the proof of the pudding. Rizzer expects to see some concrete budget ideas from Governor Thompson by the end of the month. As for Thompson's call today for bipartisan support for jobs and the economy, Rizzer says all Democrats support those ideas. It's just the method used to create change that is always debated. And besides all the partying, the pomp and circumstance of this day, there was more politics thrown in. Beth, as Tommy Thompson took his oath of office today, he pledged to bring conservative values back to state government. News 3's Bill Graff reports. I, Tommy G. Thompson, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Swear that I will support the Constitution he of the United States. He swore simply to do his job, but the new governor made clear in his inaugural address he'll do it far differently than the man he defeated. 
Where Tony Earle had championed government as the solution to problems, Tommy Thompson singled it out as the cause. What I'm saying is that we must decrease the role that government plays in our lives. A good way to start is to shorten the reach of government into our pocketbooks. Thompson promised to cut spending, cut taxes, and create jobs without ruining the environment or ignoring the disadvantage. But he conceded that to reach his goals, he'll need to form a partnership. That's the kind of partnership, not partisanship, we need today. A partnership that crosses party lines. Thompson was talking to the Democrats who control both houses of the legislature, which also had their swearing-in ceremonies today. Although the battle lines have already been drawn on some issues, one opposition leader says the new Republican governor is off to a good start. Well, I think there's a chance that we could have a, a fairly long honeymoon with the new governor. I think he's a pragmatic politician. He's not coming into office with some right-wing agenda like a Ronald Reagan had when he was elected president. Instead, some Democrats see Thompson as being more pragmatic, willing to compromise to get things done. And while there are sharp differences on many issues, both parties seem ready to give more than lip service to cooperating with each other. Bill Groff, WISC News 3, the state capitol. Jefferson Middle School students are going on an extended field trip because their home turf may be unsafe. That story and more when News 3 at 10 continues. A Westside Madison school will temporarily close later this month so a potential health risk can be removed. Beth, the ceiling tiles at Jefferson Middle School have been found to be emitting low levels of PCBs, chemicals linked to cancer and birth defects. And until those tiles are removed, students will be removed. We feel very comfortable that, uh, that we're taking a very conservative, very precautionary approach. We think that, uh, that the exposure to in this particular case is very, very low, but it is something we can manage. Superintendent Travis is downplaying the potential health risk to students, calling it very minimal. Still, it has been determined that the risk exceeds the inconvenience of moving students to alternate locations for a couple of months. At this level of risk, any measure that can significantly reduce or eliminate this exposure should be undertaken at the earliest opportunity. Tile removal to be done by the company that installed them at no cost is to begin January 19th and expected to take about three months. Seventh and eighth graders during that time will likely attend class next door at Memorial High School. Sixth graders alternate class sites have yet to be determined. At greatest risk are school employees who have worked at Jefferson for more than five years that we would expect them, that we would strongly urge, if not require them, to have uh, blood tests. Now, at the level of PCBs detected at Jefferson, it, it is estimated it would take 18 years of exposure to create a cancer risk of one in 100,000. Two men remain hospitalized tonight after seven snowmobiles fell through the ice on Lake Wabisa last night. 37-year-old Lawrence Feeman is in critical condition, his brother Dan in good condition. Authorities are calling one rescuer a hero, the accident avoidable. News 3's Dave Schulte reports. Veteran fishermen say you have to know Lake Wabisa. Springs that feed the lake keep some areas from freezing, no matter how cold it gets. But the seven accident victims apparently did not know that. Riding single file, they crossed an area covered by thin ice. One by one, they fell through. The accident occurred at about 6.30. The Themans were the last to be rescued. Lawrence Themen was in the water more than half an hour. Deputy Bob Pavey, my partner, drove down the railroad tracks in his Bronco squad car and still spotted two men in the water. He put on a float coat and with a line dove into the water and held the one man up until the McFarland Volunteer Fire Department got there and could toss the line to him. Uh, his efforts definitely...